Uh, okay, everyone, welcome back. Uh, I hope that uh, even though we had a short introduction earlier, that it was helpful for us to uh, really get an idea of what authority is all about. So authority is about uh, privileges. It's about rights. It's about influence within a given sphere. And authority can be vested or given by um, you know some organization or uh, uh, in, in our case what we are going to learn is that God has vested mankind with authority so God has given mankind authority and authority can be recognized by uh, you know uh, maybe a symbol like a badge or a uniform in our case as believers though we don't have uh, anything on the outside that reveals our authority we know in christ jesus in the spiritual realm you know uh, we are now part of the kingdom of light we are washed by the blood of jesus and uh, the enemy when I say the enemy, we don't. We are not talking about any a human being. We are not wrestling against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers of darkness. So Satan and his kingdom of darkness, uh, they recognize that we don't belong to them. If you're a believer, they recognize that you are part of another kingdom. Okay? So uh, authority, as far as a believer is concerned, no, is uh, is something for a believer to really grasp because one can use it, one can uh, walk with it, one can uh, be victorious because of the authority that has been given to them. Now, we said earlier that even if we have authority, uh, but we don't know that we have authority or uh, we don't use our authority, it gets wasted. Uh, so just to kind of make that point again, I want to uh, share an illustration. Imagine a, a boy, you know, you, you watch, uh, you read some of these stories or in some of the movies, you know, there's a young, young uh, 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 man who is actually the son of the king, but he doesn't know that he is the prince. Okay. Uh, and somebody with that kind of a capacity, even when it is his turn, to make some decisions for the kingdom, he doesn't do it. It's a great loss for the kingdom. So in the same way, we as children of God, you know, we are uh, kings and priests, the Bible says, and God gives us authority in the natural realm, in the spiritual realm. Now, yes, we are going through battles, but if you're not using that authority, okay, who's to blame? Can we blame God? No, he already gave it to us, but we are the ones who are not using it. And so it's going wasted. Or in other words, it is unused. Uh, and and that's, uh, that's something that we have to look into and change. So why are we even learning about spiritual authority? I already said that uh, uh, being alive here on the face of the earth, uh, yes, Jesus has done everything on the cross for us. We now have new life in Christ. We look forward to eternal life uh, with the Lord Jesus Christ. Then why are we still here? You know, we have, we, we, as Jesus taught us, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. We are here for the purposes of God. We are here to fulfill the purpose of God. One of the, uh, one of the main passions for any believer is to win more souls for the kingdom of God. You know, to bring in more people, they need to know about the Lord. Nobody should be lost in eternity. So with that, we are reaching out to people. We are also uh, serving the Lord. We are ministering to reveal the glory of God. You know, as per the, the standards of God, being able to serve Him well uh, and honor Him, glorify His name, that is something we look forward to. Right? So these are all some of the reasons why we are still here. Otherwise, we can always pack our bags and say, hey, anyway, I know I'm going to heaven, so I can just go. But God has a purpose for each of us to fulfill. Now, while we are fulfilling this purpose, I started by saying there can be challenges. Jesus himself said, right, in this world, you will have tribulation. You will have uh, difficulties. There will be opposition. There will be struggles. 
but take heart i have overcome the world so there are things for us to overcome now as a believer who understands their authority uh, we can be victorious right we can be victorious in the midst of these challenges now um, there there are many different passages we can look at some of which have been referenced here in our notes so you know the uh, satan opposes us um, we have uh, struggles with the flesh uh, where some of our appetites they want to distract us take us away from the lord or we know that the world tries to entice us or tries to um uh, derail us from the the mission that god has given us to live for christ right so these are all uh, uh, some of the things that come against us so when the world satan or our own flesh is acting against us we need victory okay and what i'm talking about is normal for every believer just because we are believers it doesn't mean you know now you're you're wearing some sort of a shield and uh, nothing can pierce through that shield it's not like that we do have all these struggles we have to battle with satan we have to battle with uh, you know our our fleshly appetites we have to battle with the temptations of the world now when we are doing that it's when we use our authority that we can overcome okay but if we give up then it's not god's fault god has already given us the authority you have to recognize it okay but here's the truth a believer can be victorious when we read about jesus it's so amazing uh, in the book of hebrews we are told jesus was tempted in every way you know we always say it's a mystery he's fully god but he was fully man he went through everything that a man goes through okay so talk about temptation talk about disappointment discouragement um you know opposition anything list it all out sadness uh, loss jesus wept it says he went through all the pains of of uh, mankind yet the bible says yet without sin overcoming life so if you need an example of an overcoming life look at the life of jesus he lived as a human being also yes he was fully god but he was fully man the bible very clearly says sinless spotless lamb of god how can you live in the world and not be sinful that's what the people around us will tell us if you're in the world sin will affect you but for a believer that need not be the case we can overcome amen yeah so we need to recognize that so why are we learning about believers authority because then i can be victorious right i can be victorious against the lies of the devil against the temptations of the enemy right every confusion or even my own fleshly appetites i can walk in self control it's the fruit of the spirit okay so these are all the realities um uh, that that we just want to uh, remind us of as believers we can walk in victory we do have an enemy the bible says in first peter 5:8 that satan is going about like a roaring lion okay and he's waiting he's waiting to catch somebody who displays some sort of a weakness but when i learn about my authority i'm not going to be that person that satan can devour okay so that is why we are learning so that you and i in our daily life experience can be victorious that's the life of a believer overcoming life okay so what but why are a lot of believers still living in failure and why do they give in to temptation why do they suffer struggle any idea yeah unused authority they don't even um recognize that they have the authority and they are overcomers so you see satan can only lie he can deceive and we create our own failure you got it but he can't defeat us if we know who we are he can't defeat us if we understand in this case our authority okay, so believers unfortunately when i say believers even myself like when i didn't know about believers authority uh you just give in to the enemy and say oh i'm so weak the world is so powerful and uh, 
I'm just a young person. You know, these are the excuses that believers make. But we need not do that. We can walk in victory because we have the authority. Now, there could be demonic disturbances and disruptions in our own lives. Okay, uh, Many of us may have certain stories of how uh, you have experienced the enemy uh, coming against you. But it is mentioned in scripture that Satan can cause disruptions and disturbances. One good example is when Jesus was with his disciples in a boat, right? And there was a storm. You remember that? What happened? They were so afraid. They tried to wake Jesus up. And uh, uh, Jesus went and rebuked the winds and the waves. And it just everything just calmed down. But Jesus also rebuked the disciples and their unbelief. Why? Because what, what Jesus expected is for the disciples to use their authority. They too could have done it. But instead of using their authority, they were afraid. They thought they were going to sink. Right? So Jesus did it for them, but he was unhappy. This incident is in Luke 8. He was unhappy that the disciples did not take up their authority. Now the second point is, if the storm was in the will of God, do you think Jesus would have rebuked it? If something is in the will of God, will God stop it in our lives? No, no, because it, it doesn't make sense. If something is God's will, God must let it happen, right? But Jesus rebuked the storm. That tells us something. The storm was not of God. Then of whom was it? We have two kingdoms, kingdom of light, kingdom of darkness. So if it's not of the kingdom of light, there is only one other kingdom, right? So it's coming from the demonic. Now when Jesus is rebuking, it means it's of the opposite kingdom. You got it? So what is Jesus actually demonstrating? He's demonstrating his authority. And he's saying, when the demonic kingdom comes against you, you rise up. Take your authority. Use your authority. Rebuke. Stop. You have the power. And when the disciples did not do this, he said, what is this? What unbelief. Okay. So that is God's expectation in the life of believers. Do you think Satan will, will try to oppose us and create trouble for us? Yes, no, not sure. Yes, okay, that's true. In fact, he would be more interested to trouble a believer because he knows we are living for the purposes of God. It's a given for everyone. He will trouble every human being, especially believers, because he knows he can somehow, that's all he's trying to do. Whatever God is intending to do, he wants to be a hindrance in that. So, it's a given. It's not surprising. Hey, Satan is try, trying to trouble me, disturb me. Yeah, of course. It's, it's in a sense, that's like a given. Or, you know, I'm just trying to say that uh, it happens in every believer's life. Nothing new. Okay? But we shouldn't let that scare us or intimidate us as if something new is happening. No. Obviously, he will try to stop us only. Okay, Satan, you're trying to stop me. I'm just going to use my authority. I am going to rebuke you, get you out of the way, and I'm going to keep moving. That is the attitude which we need to carry as believers. Okay, So uh, we can overcome and dominate demonic disturbances and disruptions as believers. Okay? Take authority, stand your ground. We can not just take authority for our own lives uh, and calm storms for our own selves, but we can actually minister to other people. You know, when Jesus ministered, he saw um, uh, people who were sick. In Luke 13, there is uh, an incident of a woman who was crippled 
skin she couldn't she couldn't like get up she couldn't straighten herself out and when jesus saw her he said that um how is this daughter of abraham bound satan has bound her he recognizes that this is a child of the covenant there is a promise what covenant did god make with uh, his people he said i am jehovah rafa the god who heals you i promise you healing okay and so when he looks at that woman he says but how come she's oppressed how come she's suffering satan has bound a child of the covenant this should not be and then he commands woman thou art loosed okay he takes authority now in this case it's for somebody else who's oppressed he sets that person free so when we are ministering to people maybe we are talking to a young person who's going through some challenges some difficulties in their lives somebody is sick or some family um, is going through some demonic disturbances we can take authority on their behalf and say hey how come satan is trying to trouble you no way okay let's pray in the name of jesus let's bind the works of darkness in the name of jesus let's rebuke we'll come to that as we go ahead how do we um how do we exercise our authority from scripture we can learn some ways in which we can actually command we can release that authority but for now i'm just telling us that i can exercise authority in my own life i can exercise authority for others i see somebody is suffering because of a demonic work i go against it right so uh, very beautiful in 1 john chapter 3 and verse 8 we are told that jesus came to destroy the works of the devil whatever works of the devil so what are some works of the devil you are lying stealing destroying anything else deception accusation uh, we could also say you know oppression uh, even sickness sometimes manifests through oppression so sickness that's the work of the evil one so all these manifestations happen when we see a manifestation that is not of god what does the bible say why did jesus come he had an agenda destroy the works of the devil so the same thing is true for us when we see something that is not of the nature of god something that is not of the word of god something that is not of the spirit of god we don't have to tolerate it don't tolerate it. destroy it. the works of the devil we need to be passionate about it right to rise up to destroy if it's not of god uh, and if it's of the enemy then you have no place anywhere not in my life not in the life of anyone else okay so in this way we can take authority when we understand that god has given us the authority and uh, Jesus did that and he also told us that you know he went up to heaven and he said i now send you i'm sending you in john 20 21 he told his disciples whatever i did you have to go now you have to do the same thing okay you have to be my witnesses you are my disciples so what is the um what is the responsibility of a disciple simplest responsibility of any disciple any disciple anywhere to commission to the nation to uh, commission to commission the nation to god's uh, okay. word to the nation <coughs> yeah so you're talking about a believer or who's a disciple um i was just saying a disciple of any kind like if you're a disciple of of you know some leader then what is the least that you can be sister you can uh, to serve others serve others okay right serve others all right so the point i was trying to make is a disciple jesus also said that should be like his master right we we talked about it in our previous um courses a disciple should be like his master Now, how was Jesus, as far as the works of the enemy were concerned? He went against it. 
not once he tolerated never did he tell one person that okay you know you suffer for some time uh, i i'll think about it i'll come back to you no way somebody is sick somebody is demon possessed you know uh, leave in jesus name cast out in the name of jesus like he just did miracles and miracles and miracles in fact some of the passages they just say that many were brought all were healed so not everything is listed out but jesus did so many miracles in people's lives to demonstrate this authority so point i'm trying to make is we are disciples so if we say we are disciples if jesus walked in authority you also have to walk in authority if jesus overcame satan and all his works we also have to overcome satan and all his works right if he was victorious through all his temptations all his difficulties he was able to fulfill the purpose so difficult no the purpose that god gave him you have to die for the sins of the people hang on the cross so difficult no i don't know i mean i can't imagine somebody signing up for something like that and saying okay i'll do it right so hard so so hard he did it now he fulfilled the purpose for his life we can fulfill whatever it is okay of course he did the hardest thing now yes things can be challenging in our lives but we can also overcome and fulfill what god wants us to So these are all the reasons why we are learning about believers authority so that we can be those sent ones the disciples okay and we can represent Jesus here on the earth and we can fulfill our responsibility here on the earth by taking authority remember Jesus said Matthew 16 verse 16 through 19 i give you the keys of the kingdom we talked about it when we talked about prayer so he gives us the keys what is keys what does it represent if somebody has the keys to uh, this campus what would you think of that person access yeah you have access and uh, if if you're a person of um like influence and uh, you have been given all the keys it just means you've been given the authority you make the decisions you know for this particular campus so jesus told that the disciples right we believers he gives us the keys of the kingdom it sounds really scary like oh man like if somebody gives you the key of their car and says okay take deal with it I'm like oh no i now have to take care of this vehicle you know i have to drive it safely it's a responsibility jesus is saying i'm giving you the keys of the kingdom it's huge that god would even trust us he is giving the authority i'm saying come on take it i give you the keys of the kingdom now how to operate that authority he gave us a lesson right there you know whatever uh, you bind on earth whatever is bound in heaven you lose on earth whatever is loosed in heaven so uh, what we understand by that is same thing matthew 6:10 thy kingdom come thy will be done what is here should be that of god if there's something which is not of god we have to get it out that's the way we exercise our authority okay so these are all the reasons why we are studying about our authority and also just to remind us that we have been created with dominion and authority can someone please turn to genesis chapter 1 verses 26 to 28 please if you can read out that passage it will be very helpful Can I read, sister? Um, uh, sister Gertrude, somebody is reading it out here. Maybe oh, okay. to hear you very well. No, we can't hear, sir. Ah, uh, please hold on, sister Gertrude. We are reading it here. Okay. Yeah. 
Genesis 1, 26 to 28. Then God said, let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Okay, sure. So what do we understand here? Okay, we understand that when God created man, he created man in his own image. Okay, image uh, in his own likeness, it says. So what do we understand? He, he made us like God in the sense that, you know, um, as far as the nature is concerned, like he wanted us to be pure just like him, just, just like him. So to represent him, okay, so he created us in his own image and in his likeness. And another thing that we observe here is he gave man dominion. And then we see spheres. Mainly we understand that God gave, um, uh, God gave realms, if you want to call it, uh, here on the earth and said that I'm giving you authority on all these realms. Like, you know, uh, whatever's under the sea, whatever is on the ground, uh, things that are in the sky, I'm giving you authority, dominion. Dominion means you have to rule and reign. Okay, you have to take care. You have to take care. You are in charge now. Okay? So if, I, if somebody puts us in charge and says, okay, I put you in charge of uh, uh, cleaning this room okay, or taking care of this room, then everything that concerns this room becomes my responsibility. I give you dominion. This space is yours. How I keep this place, who comes in, who goes out, what happens here, I have the authority. I rule and reign here. If anything goes wrong, I am responsible. So in that way, when the Lord created the world, he gave us the dominion. He made us in his image and he gave us the dominion and said, you're responsible. You take care, subdue, okay? Do the right thing. You regulate, you manage, manage it correctly. So that is what dominion means. In that manner, he gave us the authority. Now, if you look at a couple of other scriptures, uh, like Psalm 8 verses 3, to it, now there we notice that God created us, and the scripture also says a little lower than the angels. Okay, a little lower than the angels. The word that angels refer is Elohim. It means God. So we said that God has created us in His own image in his own likeness, and he gave us dominion. Now, Psalm 8 says, he made us a little lower than the angels. And that word angels is God or Elohim. It simply means that there, are, there, is, there is a certain glory for heavenly hosts, which we as human beings don't have, right? We don't have that. It simply means that. It does not mean hierarchy, that God made us lower than the angels. We are subject to the angels. That's not the interpretation. He has made us to rule and reign here on the earth, but we don't have, um, you know, the, the kind of glory that heavenly beings have because their glory is very different. Okay, so that's, that's what it simply means. So we don't have that kind of glory. Uh, and at the same time, there's another passage of Psalm 115 verse 16, where the Bible says, the heavens are the Lord's, but the earth he has given to the children of men. So we are not like heavenly beings, right? Being a human being here on earth is quite different from uh, a heavenly host of some sort. But at the same time, we are carrying dominion, which is pertaining to this world. We are the ones who are carrying the dominion. And very clearly, Psalm 115 and verse 16, it says, the heavens are the Lord's. He deals with it. What is going on in the heavens? 
he is taking responsibility for that but what does it say the earth he has given to the children of men meaning this earth is our responsibility so whatever happens here on the earth we can't blame god for everything god is doing you know all these calamities are happening because of god people are suffering because of god god did it god allowed it god permitted it you know, we use all all such terminology but the scriptures are clearly saying when god created us he created us in the image likeness and gave us dominion and scriptures tell he said the earth belongs to you you subdue you manage anything goes wrong you are equally responsible in fact you are responsible right so imagine somebody who gives us responsibility and takes it back so if there's a bike and i give it to one of you and say you can keep it for a month no problem you know use it for all your tasks whatever you need but the very next day i come back and say um i think that road is not safe i'll drive a little bit you know you sit behind me uh, and uh, then the following day i give it back to you and the day after that i say uh no no this road has many potholes i'll drive it so it's like i'm not actually giving you the full responsibility i'm totally you know uh, interfering and taking it back every now and then because i'm not sure or i don't trust you right there can be so many reasons but as far as the earth is concerned the way god gave us dominion is complete he doesn't keep coming back and saying okay now you give it back to me you're not doing a good job it's fully our responsibility what is going on in the world today is our responsibility god is not you know playing this back and forth game and so for us to keep saying that um uh things are going wrong in the world you know we talk about so many things like you know wars or we are talking about uh, calamities natural disasters and we say uh, it's a work of god it's god's plan god has permitted it but what does the bible say when he created the earth he gave it to us and he said it's your duty now it's your job you take care okay so the heavens belong to the lord but the earth he has given to the children of men if we don't take our responsibility many things happen we can't blame god for that okay so that's something as believers we need to recognize and there's a really beautiful uh, example which we usually use and in this we talk about a home that is rented i know in india we do that renting out a home Uh, so the owner is a certain person but they rent the house to someone else and a, an amount of money is paid you know either every month or annual whichever way it's paid okay so hopefully uh, people from other countries can relate to what i'm saying now even in this situation when a home is rented imagine you know a nicely painted decorated home is given to a tenant uh and the owner goes and says okay i'll come back next year and when they come back next year if the house is in a mess right the walls are a mess everything is broken will we blame the owner who did all this who was not careful or who was not responsible that the tenant the keys are in the tenant's hands so in the same way god has given us dominion and he told us you subdue you do the needful right and if we don't do our part and we keep saying we just sit down and we say god you do something he's saying no you do something i'm asking you to do something i put you in charge got it so we need to recognize this there are many things where we just wash our hands and say god did it it's because of god it's god's will but not really we were supposed to do something which we did not do and now we're blaming god got it so 
we have to recognize that we have been given authority dominions we are caretakers of creation so even today for the environmental destruction that we see around us let's not blame god we are not doing a good job okay so that's the reality now we have to rise up we have to pray ask god give me lord give me ideas help me implement those ideas you know manage things well maybe we'll see a change in in um, you know some of these environmental uh, destructions right or even in wars maybe we'll see a change don't know but we've got to take our responsibilities because we are caretakers and managers and god has already assigned us so two things that uh, you know i want to uh, remind us when it comes to saying that god created us in his own image one is in his own image as i said earlier he made us like him so when he made us like him it simply means he gave us a personality he gave us the ability to reason meaning we are not like ro um, robots where god just says okay everybody stand in line everybody march forward and then we have to do it it's not like that he gave us the capacity to reason you think i'm keeping a tree here uh, it has fruit of good and evil don't touch it you have an option you can think for yourself right so the capacity to reason a personality intellect all this means that we have been created in the image of god like god that's how god is right he hears he speaks he communicates he relates so that's how he made us with those same capabilities and he also made us to represent him so when he gave adam and eve that garden he expected that when he is not there they will be managers the way god is did god create the world beautiful perfect yeah everything was perfect because that's how he does things so perfect so beautiful so pure unfortunately man didn't represent very well okay and there lies the problem now that we are believers and we have been redeemed uh, by the lord jesus christ we have that opportunity to exercise our authority in a right way if i may put it this way right use the authority in the right way or manage in a right way or represent god in the right way we have to do that so uh, he gave us he made us in his image meaning he made us like him with all the capacities required and he wanted us to represent him and he wanted us to execute the authority and uh, this would this is what god had as a normal course of action in his mind saying man will handle okay? and uh, only as and when needed we say oh sovereign god he does whatever he wants while the sovereignty of god is very real and true there's also the responsibility of man you ca we cannot deny the responsibility of man completely and put everything on god and say god is sovereign he only does everything you don't have any control that's not true okay so he um as a normal thing he wanted man to take responsibility uh, only when required we find that god just intervenes however he thinks is right which he obviously can do right but normally a uh, man has to take responsibility and man has to take his authority um and we all know you know at what time things went wrong it was uh we call it the fall right genesis chapter 3 uh, it started with disobedience against god and uh, when man disobeyed god sin corrupted the earth okay and uh, like he man had to be sent out we we know everything that happened but then another another very important thing has happened during the fall and that is 
the authority which was given to man completely it kind of shifted to satan and i think we have talked about this also in our previous course i don't remember uh, but do you recall when jesus was fasting for 40 days okay satan comes to him he tempts him and he says something like you know all these kingdoms they belong to me if if you bow down worship me i'll give it to you now ask the question, <coughs> how could Satan say that? Don't the kingdoms of the earth belong to man? We just read that. Psalm 115 verse 16, the heavens belong to the Lord, but the earth he has given to the children of men. But here is Satan saying, these kingdoms belong to me and I will give it to you. When did that happen? Right? It's supposed to belong to man. So the shift happened when man sinned and Adam and Eve sinned and the earth was corrupted. Another spiritual um, uh, you know, truth is that the authority shifted to Satan. So the world that we live in right now has a lot of interference. Okay, So Satan is playing his game in many places. And uh, sometimes people who don't recognize it or understand it, for those destructions, they end up, you know, labeling God as the author. But actually, who is doing it? Satan is very much involved in this world. Okay? He, he is the God of this world, small g in the New Testament. You have that title for Satan, the God of this world. So he is playing havoc also. And this happened at the time of the fall. But the good news is that the Lord Jesus he came, he redeemed us. And what did he tell us? We, we understand that, uh, you know, he said, all authority on heaven and earth is mine and I give it to you. How could Jesus say that? Unless he bought back all the authority that Satan had taken away. Right? So now we don't have to be afraid because whatever happened in the fall, Jesus has reversed it. And his authority, he gives it to us. And we can now exercise the authority that God has given us. Okay, so with this, I think I'm going to stop. Um, if there are any questions, we can take it up and move forward in the next class. So today, primarily, we have discussed about the meaning or the understanding of what authority is. And we've seen how God created man with authority and dominion, but man lost it. But through Jesus Christ, that has been redeemed. So now we can still walk in authority. Okay. So I'm looking at our uh, chat here. Uh, there seem to be two questions. Uh, when some people went to the Lord, some people say that God has taken them. Is it right or wrong? When we lose the people, can we blame God? So, bless you, uh, the Bible does talk about, you know, uh, like fulfilling the number of your days, which means there is a time which is considered as the fulfillment of that. So, um, just as because of sin, it is appointed for man to die once. Scriptures also say that. So, you see, Death is imminent. It will happen to everyone. Now, the time of that death, um, I think God is aware of it. But what you're asking here is, you're saying, does God make people you know, sick and do they die? Like he takes them away because people say God has taken. I don't think so. It's not like that. It's not like that. Um, now, Sanjay, is it true that when sin increases on the earth, it will have spiritual consequences, dying species of plants and animals, and an increase in natural disasters? Um, so I, I see where you're coming from, Brother Sanjay. But uh, yes, we could say that there will be consequences because of sin. But at the same time, whatever we discussed today, when we don't 
take responsibility, even then we see these consequences manifesting, right? Because nobody is doing anything. And, uh, uh, you know, so what I'm trying to say is we can't only spiritualize uh, consequences. Because of sin, there will be consequences, but we also have to take responsibility and do something about it. Okay, I, I am just sharing that. Please let me know if you agree with me. Uh, Sister Gertrude, when we rebuke the works of Satan, he doesn't listen. <laughs> okay, so uh, Sister Gertrude, we, I, I understand sometimes you don't see an immediate change, but by faith, okay, you you take that step of going against the enemy, and you will see a difference. Don't give up. Okay, so just because we're not having one step results doesn't mean that we are ineffective. Keep your faith. Keep going after it. You will see the difference. I hope that helps. Yes, sister. Thank you. OK, thank you. Um, Kediksha, even though we have authority and we try so much to change things or situations, those are not according to God, and it doesn't happen then. So same thing, Diksha, um, to faith and patience. Do you recall? That's what we studied in the faith course. Uh, sometimes we don't have immediate results, but that doesn't mean that we will not see a change. We have to journey by faith and uh, keep doing what we know is right. Uh, surely we, we will see God's hand in that situation. Okay, so thank you, everyone. Thank you for those really uh, good and relevant questions. I think we have just about two minutes left. So if there's a final question, we can take it up. We can pray and close. Fine. So let's uh, pray and close for this morning. Um, may I request either Akhil or Abhishek to please lead us? Let's pray. Gracious loving Lord, we thank you for the session that has been just started and completed. We pray for your peace and presence in the course that we have resumed and the semester that all of us are attending online and offline. We pray for your blessings from the people who tutor and who passionately teach your word, O oh Lord. We ask this and commit this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you, Akil. Thank you, everyone. God bless you. All the best. Once again, please don't be discouraged, okay, if you have not got a good result in the last semester. Uh, work hard. You know, I'm sure you'll be able to excel uh, this time around. So God bless you. All the best.